Hi guys, today's question is burst balloon problem. We are given n balloons and we have to find the maximum profit that we can get by bursting these balloons. So obviously each balloon is associated with an amount and when we burst that balloon, we get some score. How do we calculate the score? That is dependent on its neighbors. So let me just show you. So here I have taken the example that is there on lead code itself. So if I decide to burst this one first, so what will be the score? It will be 3 into 1 into 5. So value of this into this into this. So value on both the neighbors multiplied by that value itself. Okay. Similarly, if I decided to burst 5 first instead of 1, then the, my score would have been 1 into 5 into 8. Right now you must be thinking what about when I burst 3 and 8 for that it is given in the question that you can imagine there is an extra 1 on both the sides. So if you burst 8 your score will be 5 into 8 into 1 and similarly when you burst 3 your score will be 1 into 3 into 1. Now let's just quickly see why the profit that we get by bursting these balloons would be different if the sequence of bursting them is different. I am just taking two random sequences to show you how it will be different. Suppose I burst it in the order 1, 3, 8, 5 and here I burst it in the order 8, 3, 1, 5, any random orders I have written. Okay. So if I burst 1 first, then this 1 will be gone and the leftover balloons will be 3, 5, 8. Right? And what will be the score that we will get? That will be 3 into 1 into 5. So I will get the score of 3 into 1 into 5 and my balloons will be now 358. So after bursting 1, I am bursting 3. So when 3 is gone, my balloons will be 5 and 8 and the score that I am getting from bursting 3 will be 1 into 3 into 5. So it will be 1 into 3 into 5. Now after bursting 3, I am going to burst 8. So if I burst 8, my score will be 5 into 8 into 1. So 5 into 8 into 1 and the leftover balloon will only be 5. So now if I burst this, it will be 1 into 5 into 1. So this will be my total score if I burst the balloons in the sequence 1, 3, 8, 5. Whereas if I burst them in the sequence 8, 3, 1, 5, what will be the scores? Let's see. If I burst 8 first, then the leftover balloons will be 3, 1, 5. And the score that I am getting by bursting 8 is 1 into 8 into 3. So it will be 1 into 8 into 3. Now I am bursting 3. After bursting 3, leftover will be 1, 5. And the score that I will get by bursting 3 will be 1 into 3 into 1. After that, I am going to burst 1. So if I burst 1, the leftover will be 5. And the score of bursting 1 will be 1 into 1 into 5. So 1 into 1 into 5. Then if I burst 5 again, uh, I will get 1 into 5 into 1. And that's it. So here this total score will be this and here the total score will be this. I am not even going to calculate the values. You can see that these two values will be different, right? Let's obviously get started with the brute force approach. So if there are n balloons with us, what are the number of sequences that are possible to burst these balloons? It is n factorial. Just to understand in simple terms, the first balloon, you can place it in n positions to burst it, right? And after you have placed the first balloon, there will be n minus 2 positions for the second one. For the third one, there will be n minus 3 positions and so on. So if we calculate, it will be n into n minus 1 into n minus 2 and so on till 1. So n factorial sequence is possible or you can see it as n p n sequence is possible. And this is to just calculate the number of sequences. After you have the number of sequences, you have to calculate the score of bursting them in these sequences. So the score can be calculated in n square. It can be optimized to n, which can be optimized to order of 1. But I am not going to get into all of that because the n factorial sequences itself is not at all optimized. And that is not the solution that we are looking forward to. Let's see logically, is it possible to optimize this problem? So suppose there are five balloons given to us b1 b2 b3 b4 b5 now suppose we decide to burst b3 first if i burst this then my leftover balloons will be b1 b2 b4 b5 right the first intuition that you must be getting is that okay b1 b2 and b4 b5 are two separate sub problems but are they really separate sub problems let's see that now see if i burst b2 first then the score of bursting B4 after that will be B1 into B4 into B5. But instead of bursting B2 first, if I would have bursted uh, B1 first, then the score would still be B2 into B4 into B5. So as you can see, the score of bursting B4 is dependent on B1, B2. So B4, B5 is not a separate independent sub problem than B1, B2 because this is dependent on this. Similarly, say if we were to burst B4 or B5 first, then this is not a separate independent identity. The score of bursting these depend on these values, right? 
so what can we do guys before we go ahead and try to come up with a solution i really need you to think about it and understand properly that why these two are not independent sub problems and why you can't use dp or divide and conquer right now on this think about what we do in dp when we are considering a sub problem that sub problem is completely independent and it does not depend on any other sub problem that is not the case over here if i burst any one balloon so if i burst b4 first then the sub problems will be b1 b2 b3 and b5 but again these are not completely independent sub problems so i cannot use dp or divide and conquer this is an extremely important point to notice and a mistake that a lot of people do i also did this mistake when i saw the problem for the first time because our first instinct is that okay we'll divide it into sub problems and we'll use dp but we also have to see is it really two independent sub problems or not so am i saying that this question cannot be divided into sub problems no i am not saying that i am saying that we have to think a little bit differently over here now look at the question in this way that instead of bursting this b3 first what if i burst this last let me tell you why am i saying that so if i burst this in the end what i know is that these two then become independent why is that now when i am going to calculate the score of bursting this b4 i know that on left b3 will be there because that is the balloon that i am going to burst in the end so this will be there anyway so now b4 b5 becomes a sub problem now there are two ways that okay i can either burst b4 first or b5 first so if i burst b4 first then the uh, score will be b3 into b4 into b5 then after bursting b4 i can burst b5 then the score will be b3 into b5 similarly if i burst b5 first the score will be b3 b4 b5 plus after that the score will be b3 into b4 but the point is that if i burst this in the end we know that after bursting this also this will be there i'm going to burst it in the end right similarly b1 b2 also becomes a completely separate sub problem because we know that on the right side b3 will be there to explain this better earlier what did i say that if i burst b3 first that means after bursting the rest of the balloons are b1 b2 b4 b5 okay now the score on bursting b4 depends on whether i burst b1 or b2 right so this is dependent on this similarly if i burst b2 it is dependent on whether this has been burst or not right but if i burst b3 in the end like i know that this will be there till the very end then b4 b5 becomes a sub problem and this becomes a sub problem because while calculating we know that okay left neighbor will be b3 so it is independent and similarly while calculating uh, for b1 b2 we know that right neighbor will be b3 so this becomes independent so now if you have understood why we are more concerned about which balloon will be burst last rather than which balloon will be burst first then you have understood the most important point of the question but there is one more little point to understand that is when i am saying that i am dividing the question into sub problems these sub problems although are independent like i can calculate the score separately it doesn't mean that i can separate it out from the question what i am trying to say is that although i said that okay b4 b5 becomes an independent uh, sub problem it does not mean that i could have calculated it if i had only the values b4 b5 b3 value will still be used by calculating the score just that we know that okay this will be there okay just to explain it little bit more so here i told you two cases right that either we can burst b4 or b5 while calculating that we used the b3 value right so it was not like that i am not going to need the rest of the problem it is that that this became independent because i know that what is there in the rest of the problem i know that what is there on the left side so i can use it as it is it is not that i am not going to consider it only in the sub problem i know this point can be a little hard to understand because there are no values right now and just variables so we are going to see this when we go back to our example and calculate the value so this point will be reiterated properly don't worry about it now that we know that we can divide our questions into sub problems we can reuse the answers to these sub problems to finally find our answer so we can do memoization or dynamic programming for that so let's finally get into dynamic programming as you can see i have made a tp2d matrix but before we start getting into what each box means i wanted to notice one more thing that when we burst any one particular balloon the sub problems will be of smaller length than the initial problem that we had like if there are four balloons i burst one 
the remaining sub problems will be 2 and 1 right the length of this this is 2 this is 1 this will obviously be lesser than 4 because I am bursting 1 and dividing into 2 sub problems right so the length of the sub problems will always be smaller so if we use bottom up dp what we will do is we will first find answers to the sub problems of length 1 and then of length 2 then length 3 and so on so for this what we use is commonly called as cap strategy what happens in it is that instead of filling our array row by row like how we usually fill in dp we fill this row then this row then this row then this row or column wise this column this column this column this column instead of doing that we are just going to fill half of the uh, array and not the entire thing like we divide into diagonal and then we will either fill first half like the lower half or the upper half so this what this is what we do in gap strategy for those of you who already know gap strategy you can skip to this time because i'm going to explain a little bit about it so as i said we will first be finding answers to the sub problems of length one in this box which all our boxes are there of length one so for length one your starting point and last point will be same right so these diagonal elements are the ones right so because here the point is like three to three here it is one to one here it is 5 to 5 or if you have to see index wise 0 to 0 index 1 to 1 index 2 to 2 index 3 to 3 index right so diagonal elements are the ones that show the sub problems of one length once you have answer to the sub problems of length 1 you go to length 2 right which elements will be that so here see from index 0 to index 1 this is the box from index 1 to index 2 this is the box from index 2 to index 3 this is the box Similarly, for length 3, index 0 to 2, this is the box, index 1 to 3, this is the box. So what essentially is happening is that this, these diagonal elements are telling the subproblems of length 1. After that, these elements are telling the subproblems of length 2. Then these ones tell the subproblems of length 3. Then this will be our final answer. This will be the subproblem from length 0 to 3, which is length 4. Now that we have understood what each element in this array means, let's get to the code. We'll write the code and then we will dry run it to fill the matrix. As we discussed, we are going to traverse lengthwise, right? So from length 1 to length n, here n is equal to 4, right? So here I go like for int, I'm not writing int, l equal to 1. So length is equal to 1 and length will be equal till equal to n. So 1 to n will be the length values and l plus plus. So this is my first for loop. So with each iteration in this for loop, I'm going to move diagonally. So the first iteration will be the diagonal itself. After that, these values, then these values, then these values, right? So this is the first for, first for loop. The second for loop will be for i. So i and j will be the starting and the last index of the sub problem. So my sub problem will be like this from i to j. Okay. So now the length will be equal to what? j minus i plus 1. Right. So this is my length just to give you example. So for example, I is say 0, J is 2. Right. So 0, 1, 2. Length is what? 2, 2 minus 0 plus 1, 3. So length is 3. Right. So this is what I and J denote that the starting index and the last index of the sub problem that we are considering right now. So I am going to write the for loop for the starting index now like from where our sub problem starts. So now it can be from 0 till where it will be till N minus L. Let me show you how. What is the maximum value that L can have? It can be n, so the length can be maximum n, right? So when L length will be equal to n, what is the last starting point that is possible, right? That is That will be the last value of i. So when L will be equal to n, this i value will be what? L minus n, which will be equal to 0, because from 0 position till n minus 1. So here my length will be n, right? So it works. And if you are not clear about this, it's completely fine. When we dry run, it will be completely clear. Don't worry. Now that we have the values of L and I, we can calculate J because they are interrelated, right? That is what I showed you over here. So we can just calculate the value of J from these two for loops. So my J value will be equal to I plus L minus 1. I hope you understood these for loops. So the first for loop is to move diagonally and this for loop is to move across the diagonal. Now for the sub problem from I to J, we have to find which balloon to burst last, right? That is what we are trying to find. Like from 0 to n minus 1 also, we if we had like that B3 balloon, we knew that if we burst at last, we will get the value, right? Now from I to J also, we have to do that, right? Now among these L number of balloons, they can be any balloon that we burst last, right? 
So for each balloon, we will check if we burst last and divide it into two sub problems, what will be the score? And then we compare all of those scores and see, okay, which one will be the best? Okay, so there will be one more for loop to see that, okay, what will happen if I burst this balloon in the end? So guys, I know this is a little abstract right now and you might not be able to understand from the code and it's completely fine when we dry run, I promise it will be clear. Just stay with me till I write the entire code, okay? So now I'm going to write another for loop to find out that which balloon should I burst in the end. Now this balloon will be in the sub problem from i to j. We already have our i and j values. Now we are going to get the loop for traversing among these balloons, right? So there will be one more for loop for k equal to i and k value can go up to j. So we have to find which of these k positions will be best to burst in the end. Let's say we have five balloons, okay? B1, B2, B3, B4, B5. Right now, I'm considering the sub problem of these three, right? Okay. So my uh, ij values will be what? My i value will be right now one and j value will be three, right? Now, among these three balloons, which balloon should I burst in the end is what I have to find out, right? Now, it can be either this balloon or this balloon or this balloon. Whichever balloon this is, we know that this B1 is anyway there, this B5 is anyway there, right? Now let's say that I take the case when B3 will be burst in the end, last, okay? So if this is going to burst last in this sub problem, that means B2 is already burst, B4 is already burst, right? What will be my score? It will be B1 into B3 into B5, right? This is burst, this is burst, this I am bursting in the end in this sub problem, right? Because these values are already there, I'm going to use them to calculate. That is what I meant when I said that this is not an independent sub problem, right? Because I'm going to use these B1, B5 values to calculate the score, but they are not mattering to us. They are independent as such, they are not going to change. But, so this will be a score of bursting B3 in the end. They must have been some score of bursting B3 also and bursting B4 also. Okay, again, it's fine if it's still not clear, it's completely okay, right? So here, if I am bursting K right now, I know that from I to K minus 1 have already been bursted because I'm going to burst Kth balloon in the end, right? So if, I, if in I to J balloons, I'm considering this to be the K. So if I'm going to burst this balloon in the end, that means that from i to k minus 1 I have already bursted and from k plus 1 to j I have already bursted, right? So these two values though I will for sure have to calculate, right? So say I call this as before and I call this as after or left and right, okay? So what will be the left value? Left value will be equal to dp of, so I am calling this matrix as dp, okay? dp as dp of i and k minus 1, right? And my right will be equal to dp of k plus 1 to j. To explain again that I am considering that this kth balloon is the last balloon that I am going to burst among the balloons i to j, right? Now if this is the last element in i to j, that means i to k minus 1 have already been burst. So that value will be here. Because this length will be smaller, we know that it will already be calculated in the matrix, right? That is why we are moving lengthwise. Similarly, k plus 1 to j is already bursted, right? So that value will be from right dp k plus 1j. Again, this length will also be smaller than the length that we are considering. So that also must have be already been calculated. Now, all that we have to consider is a score of bursting this particular k in the end, right? So for that, how what will be the elements? So whatever was there, i minus 1 and whatever was there, j plus 1, right? These are fixed values that don't come into the sub problem that, but we used to just calculate the score of bursting this kth balloon in the end. Since this will be the last one, right, in I to J, all the other balloons have already been busted. This is the last one. The left neighbor will be this one. The right neighbor will be this one, I minus one and J plus one. But there is an edge case over here because if I value is zero, then I minus one will become out of bounds. Similarly, if J is equal to N minus one, then J plus one will become out of bounds. So we have to check that while calculating the score. So let's do that now. Let's call that as value of bursting that particular balloon. 
so that particular value will be what so i minus 1th value so if we have to check if i is equal to 0 then our value will be equal to 1 because we have to assume a 1 on the left side right otherwise it will be equal to uh, whatever our array was so if our array was arr so array of i minus 1 so this is the left neighbor right into that particular element so this is array of k because we are considering the kth element right now into the right neighbor so right neighbor will be what we have to add the check for j so if j is equal to n minus 1 then we have to assume a 1 on right so it will be 1 otherwise it will be array of j plus 1 so this is just for the edge case because if j becomes n minus 1 then j plus 1 will become out of bounds so we have to assume a 1 over there which was already given in the question I have handled the edge case over here but I have missed one more edge case see k value goes from i to j right so here if k value is equal to y this will become from i to i minus 1 similarly if k becomes equal to j this will become j plus 1 to j which is wrong so this was actually bursting the left half and the right half right so we will have to add the check that if uh, i is equal to k then left is equal to 0 this will be the else Similarly, if k is equal to uh, j, then right will be equal to 0, otherwise it will be k plus 1 j. I know it has become hotspot, so I am just going to rewrite it in the neat way like this. So, I have rewritten this. So, if i value is equal to k, then the left value is 0, otherwise it is dp of i to k minus 1. So, from i to j, if this is k, i to k minus 1 is left and uh, right if j is equal to k it will be 0 otherwise it will be k plus 1 to j and for this value we have checked it will be array of i minus 1 into array of k into array of j plus 1. Once we calculate the values for this k we have to see among all the values of k which is the maximum value that we are getting and that will be the answer for that particular box right. So for that we are going to initialize all the elements in our array to the some minimum value or 0 because in the question the negative values are not possible. So if all the values are 0 then all I can do is dp of ij will be equal to max of the new value that I have calculated. So it will be what? So this was the score plus left plus right or whatever was the already dp ij value. I know the code can be very overwhelming but trust the process once we try run it will be clear okay. Let's start with the basic for loop the first one l equal to 1. l equal to 1 is very easy case because l equal to 1 if we start i equal to 0 to n minus l right. So l is equal to 1 so i will go from n minus 1. i values will go from 0 to n minus 1. So n minus 1 is what 3 so i values will be from 0 to 3. And the first j value will be what? So i value is 0 right now. So it will be 0 plus 1 minus 1. So basically i value will be equal to j value because these are the diagonal elements that we are going to consider. Oh again, so we are going to fill this half. So I am just going to mark these as crossed, right? We are going to fill the rest. So right now we are going to fill this element where i is equal to j. Now since i is equal to j, k value can be only 1. So let's calculate. So the left value will be 0 because i equal to k right now. So left value will be 0, right will also be 0 because j will be equal to k. There is only one value of k. So what will be the value? So now value for i equal to 0, it will be 1 into because on the left there is only 1, right, into array of k. So what is the 0th element? It is 3. So 1 into 3 into what is there on the right side? So array of j plus 1. So among this 3, 1, 5, 8, we are considering the sub problem of having only 3. We are going to burst only this, right? So when we burst this 3, on the left there is nothing. So we assume a 1, right? Because i equal to 0, we assume 1 into array of k, which is 3, into whatever is j, j plus 1. So j is also this only. So our j plus 1 element will be 1. So this will be 1 into 3 into 1. So since there is only one value, the maximum of 0 and 3. So here the answer will be 3. So initially we have filled the entire matrix with 0. So maximum of 0 and 3 is 3. So we have filled. So it's fine, right?
Let's now move on to subproblems of length 2 that is we move diagonally and cover these elements now. So now length is 2 so i value will go from what 0 to 4 minus 2 which is 2. So i value will go from 0 to 2 these 3 values and j value will be i plus l minus 1. So l is 2 so j value will be i plus 1. Okay. So let's start with i equal to 0. When i is 0, j value is equal to 1. So we are referring to this box. So in 3158, we are referring to the sub problem 31. Okay. So now in this 31, 3 could be the balloon that could have been burst in the end or 1 could be the one that would have been burst in the end. So which one are we going to burst last is what we are going to find out. So that's what k loop is for. Okay. So basically we are calculating that if we burst 3 in the end, then what will be the profit and if we burst 1 in the end what will be the profit for this sub problem and then whatever gives us more profit we are going to mark that as our answer okay so let's see if 3 was burst last then k will be equal to i right so this so this is i this is j and this is k right now okay so here since there is nothing on left so in this sub problem is there anything on left no right so left value will become 0 and what is there on right? So right is dp of k plus 1 to j. That is in this sub problem, what is the leftover part? So what is dp of 1, 1? So that is 15. So the right value is 15. See in this sub problem, what is on the right of 3? Nothing. What is on what is on the left of 3? Nothing. What is on the right of 3? The, the, the value is 15. Okay. Now if we have to calculate the score of bursting 3. So we saw what is on the left, what is on the right. So the, why were we calculating that? So in 3, 1, if we burst 3 in the end, that means the left part we would have already bursted, the right part we would have already bursted, right? What was the profit that we gained from that? So that was 0 and 15. Now when we burst 3 in the end, what is the score that we will get? That will be uh, value. So value will be what? It will be what is there on left since i is equal to 0 over here. So there is nothing on left. So there will be 1 into array of k which is 3 in our case into array of j plus 1 so this has already been bursted so what will be left j plus 1 right so this 5 will be there so this will again be 15 so in the sub problem 3 1 if we burst 3 in the end then our value would be 15 plus 15 which will be 30 okay so this is if we burst 3 in the end so now we will see what will be the score if we burst 1 in the end, okay. So now this will be our k, right. So what will be the left value? So what is on the left of this? That is dp of 3, that is dp of 0, 0. So the value will be 3. So left is 3, okay. Left is 3. And what is right? There is nothing on right because j is equal to k. So the value will be 0. So this is right. And what is the value, right? So if we are bursting this in the end that means there is nothing on left left is what array of i minus 1 or 1 so there is nothing on left so it is 1 into array of k is what 1 into array of j plus 1 is what 5 so 3 plus 5 is 8 so this is less than 30 so if we burst 3 in the end in this sub problem the profit that we will get is 30 so this is our answer for this Coming to i equal to 1, length is 2, so j value will be 2, so we are dealing with this sub problem. So in 3, 1, 5, 8, we are saying 1, 5, okay. So i is this and this is j, so k value can be either this or this. So we can, in this 1, 5, we can either burst this one in the end or we can burst this one in the end. So if this one is the last one to burst, okay, so this here right now k value will be equal to i. So in this sub problem, is there anything on the left if this value is k? No, right? There is nothing on left. So left value is 0. What is there on right? That will be dp of this 0, 1, 2, 2, 2, right? So dp of 2, 2 is what? 40. So right value is 40. That is if we burst 5 separately. This is a problem 5, okay? Now what will be the value if we burst 1 in the end? So this 40 denotes that we have burst 5. Now what are we going to calculate is that in this sub problem we are going to burst 1 in the end so what will be the score of bursting that one so left denoted that in this sub problem on the left of k what is the sub problem score that is 0 on the right of k what is the sub problem score that is 40 now of bursting this one what is the score here it will be array of i minus 1 so which is 3 
into array of k which is 1 into array of j minus j plus 1 which is 8. So here it will be 24. So if we burst 1 in the end in this sub problem 1 5 our score will be 40 plus 24 which is 64. So right now that is dp of ij value because marks of 0 and 64 but we are yet to calculate if this was burst in the end that is k value will now become equal to j right. Now if that happens so k value is over here right now our dp ij value is 64 okay. Now here what is there on the left it is this so dp of 1 minus what 15 so our left value will now become 15. So this 15 denotes the score of bursting the left sub problem which is this 15. There is nothing on right so right value will be 0 in this sub problem is there anything on the right of k no right. So now this value will be the score of bursting this particular file in the end. So in the end meaning this has already been bursted. So what is there on the left that is array of i minus 1 which is 3 into array of k which is 5 into array of j plus 1 what is on the right 8. So this is how much 40 into 3 120. 120 plus 15 is 135 out of 135 and 64 which is bigger 135. So this will get updated to 135. Let's move on to finally i equal to 2. So now when i value is equal to 2, j value will become 3 because length is still 2, right? So we are considering the sub problem of 5, 8. See for length 2, this will be the last one, right? We can't move after that. So now i value is over here, j is over here. So we see k value as this and this. So we will see which one gives us bigger answer. So in 5, 8, which one should we burst last? Either 5 or 8. So if we burst 5 in the last, if we take this case, then i is equal to k. So there is nothing on left in this sub problem. So in 5, 8, there is nothing on left, right? So left is 0. In right, there is 8. So what is the score of bursting this just 8? So that is dp of 3, 3, that is 40. So right score is 40. And if all the balloons on the left have been burst and all the balloons on the right have been burst, only 5 is left in this sub problem. So what will be the score of bursting this 5 now? That will be array of i minus 1 which is 1 into array of k which is 5 into since there is nothing on right since j is equal to n minus 1 this value will be 1 right. So this will be 5. So right now our score will be 40 plus 5 45. So if we burst 5 in the end then our score is 45. Now let's see what happens if we burst 8 in the end okay. If we burst 8 in the end that means k is over here. What is the left value? Left value will be that means bursting the sub problem 5 5. So that is 40. So now our left value has become 40. There is nothing on right. Is there anything on right of 8? No right in this sub problem 5 8? No. So right value becomes 0. So now value will mean what? So now 5 has already been bursted. So only 8 is left right. So what will be the score? 1 into 8 into 1 which is array of i minus 1 which is 1 into array of k which is 8 into because there is nothing on right j is equal to n minus 1 there it will be 1 so this is 8 here it is 40 plus 8 48 here the score was 45 so if we burst 5 in the end in this sub problem 5 8 our score was 45 and if we burst 8 in the end in this sub problem 5 8 then our uh, score was 48 we want to maximize the profit right so 45 48 what is bigger 48 so here it is so we are done with length equal to 2 now we will move on to length equal to 3 that is we are moving diagonally okay. Now since length is equal to 3 I will go from 0 to what 4 minus 3 which is what 1. So I can have only 2 values and j will be i plus 2 right. So let's start with i equal to 0 so j will be equal to 2 so 3 1 5 8. So we are considering this sub problem now. Now in 3 1 5 3 can be the last balloon to be bursted, 1 can be the last balloon to be bursted or 5 can be the last balloon to be bursted. So let's take those one by one and see which one gives us maximum profit, right? So here i is this, j is this. So if k is over here, so right now i and k are equal because there is nothing on the left of this sub problem, there is nothing on left, right? So left value will become 0. Right value will be what? So in this sub problem, what is on the right of 3? It is 1, 5 that is from 1 to 2 so from 1 to 2 what was the answer 135 so our right value now becomes 135 and what is the value 
so value now means that in this sub problem we have already bursted all the balloons on the left whose score was 0 we have already bursted all the balloons on the right whose score was 135 now we are going to burst this one in the end now this is also gone so what will be the score of bursting this 3 now it will be 1 into 3 into 8 right so array of i minus 1 since i is 0 it will be 1 into array of k which is 3 into array of j plus 1 which is 8 see now it should be completely clear why there was array of j plus 1 see whenever we are considering a value of k that means we are considering that balloon to be bursted last that means in that sub problem all the balloons on the left and the right have been bursted so what are the balloons left that is from 0 to i minus 1 and from j plus 1 to n minus 1 right so those are the leftover balloons so what is the neighbor of k now i minus 1 and what is the right neighbor of k that will be j plus 1 so here our value will be 8 into 3 is what 24 so 135 plus 24 is 159 so if among this 315 if we burst 3 last then our score will be 159 Let's check for scores if we burst 1 in the end and if we burst 5 in the end. So if we burst 1 in the end, then what is the left? So see, this is interesting now. So we are considering K over here. So in this sub problem, what is the score of the balloons on the left? So left is what? DP of 0, 0. Right now is 3. And what is the right value? It is DP of 2, 2. So just this sub problem, it is 40, right? And what is the value? That means this has been bursted, this has been bursted. Now we are going to burst this in the end. Now if we burst this, so what will be the score of this? It will be 1 into 1 into 8, which is essentially since i is 0, it will be 1 into area of k, which is 1 into area of g plus 1, which is 8. So this is 8. So this is score will be 40 plus 3 plus 8, which is less than 159. So we are not going to update right now. Now let's see what happens if we burst 5 in the end in this sub problem. So now our k moves over here. So if this is the k, what is the value of the score on the left? So our left value will now become dp of 0, 1. Right? dp of 0, 1 is what? 30. So that is the score of bursting all the balloons on the left for that sub problem. On the right, there are no balloons in this sub problem, so it will be 0. And what will be the value of bursting this in the end? These have been bursted, right? So here it will be 1 since i is 0 into array of k which is 5 into array of j plus 1 which is 8. So this is 40. Again, these total score will be 30 plus 40 which is 70 less than 159. So our answer is 159 which we got from bursting 3 in the end. So if 315 is the sub problem, then we should burst 3 in the end and 1, 5 will be the sub problem. Now for length equal to 3, let's get to i equal to 1. So when i is equal to 1, that means we are considering the sub problem 1, 5, 8. Now again, which balloon can we burst last? It can be either 1, 5 or 8. So we are going to consider all of these 1, 5, 1 and see which one gives us maximum profit. So if we burst 1 in the end in this sub problem, then what is the left score in this sub problem? Is there anything on left? No, right? So it will be 0 because essentially i value will be equal to k. So because I am here right now, right? And right value will be what? dp of k plus 1 to j. So dp of this, dp of 2, 3 is what? It is 48. And value will be equal to what? So I have already bursted this. Only 3 and 1 is left. So value will be 3 into 1 into 1, which is essentially array of i minus 1 into array of k into since there is nothing over here basically since j is equal to n minus 1 it will be 1 right so this will be 48 plus 3 is what 51 so if we burst 1 in the end then the score is 51 in this 158 right now let's see if we burst 5 last if we burst 5 in the end that means we have already bursted this and bursted this so we have to calculate the scores of this. So left is what? dp of 1, 1. That means what was the score of bursting the balloons on the left for this sub problem? What is right? The score of bursting the balloons on the right for this sub problem. So what is dp of 3, 3? So that is 40. Right now value will be equal to what? So 1 is bursted, 8 is bursted. Only 3, 5 is left. Right. So value will be what? Array of i minus 1, 3 into array of k which is 5 into since j is n minus n minus 1 it will be 1 so this will be 15 
So here our total score will be 15 plus 40 plus 15 which is 30 plus 40 which is 70 which is greater than 51. So we update BP of IJ to 70. What if we burst 8 in the end? So if this is the last one to burst that means man 5 has already been bursted. So those were the balloons on the left of this K right. So what was the score of bursting that? That is from DP of 1 to 2. So DP of 1 to 2 is what? 135. And on right, are, is there anything on right of k? No. So it will be 0 because j is equal to k, right? Now we have burst the balloons on the left. That means 1, 5 is gone. There is nothing on right. So what is the score of bursting 8? It will be what? 3 into 8 into 1. That is array of i minus 1 into array of k into 1 because j is equal to n minus 1. So this is 24. So our total score will be 135 plus 24 which is 159 which is greater than 70. So here I am going to finally put 159. What does this 159 denote? In the sub problem 158, if we burst 1 in the end, 5 in the end or 8 in the end, the bursting 8 in the end gives us maximum profit. So if this was the sub problem, then we got the maximum profit of 159 by bursting 8 in the end. And now we finally come to finding an answer that is dp of 0, 3. That is when length becomes equal to 4. Length is 4. That means i will be what? From 4 minus 4 is 0. So i value can be only 1 which is 0 and j value will be 3. So i is 0, j is 3. This is the entire thing. I can burst this in the end, this, this or this. So if I burst 3 in the end, there is nothing on left. What is there on right? So, so this is a problem 158. So which is dp of 1 to 3. dp of 1 to 3 is 159. So right is 159. And what will be the value of bursting 3? So if 158 is already gone, the value of bursting 3 will be just 3 because 1 into 3 into 1. So that will give us the total score of 159 plus 3, which is 162. So if we burst 3 in the end, our score will be 162. What will happen if we burst 1 in the end? If we burst 1 in the end, then our left score is what? That is uh, the sub problem dp of 0, 0. That is 3. What is the score of bursting the balloons on right? That is dp of 2, 3. dp of 2, 3 is what? 48. And now 3 is bursted, 5, 8 is bursted. So what will be the score while bursting the balloon 1? That will be 1 into 1 into 1 which is 1. So the score will be less than 162. So nope. Now we will try bursting 5 in the end. So if we burst 5 in the end, what is the score of bursting the balloons on left? That will be dp of 0 to 1. That is 30. What is the score of bursting the balloons on the right? That will be dp of 3, 3. dp of 3, 3 is what? 40. Bursting just 8, right? Now this is gone, this is gone. What will be the value of bursting just 5 in the end? It will be 1 into 5 into 1, which will again be less than 162. So nope. Now what if we burst 8 in the end? What is the score of bursting all the balloons on the left? That is dp of 0 to 2. TP of 0 to 2 is what? 159 plus what are the values on the left? So right value is 0 since there are no right balloons. And so now 315 is gone. What will be the score of bursting this? It will be 1 into 8 into 1. So we have a winner 159 plus 8 is 167 which is more than 162. So our final answer is 167. I hope the solution was clear to you. There were three important points in this question. The first one is to understand that why bursting the balloon first won't lead us to independent sub problems and why bursting the balloon last will lead us to independent sub problems which we can reuse. The second point was that when we say a sub problem, it is not independent of the entire question. It is independent, yes we can find answer to that, but it is still dependent because the neighbor scores are there. So this question is little different than the rest of the DP question. And the third point was to understand that why we are going to use gap strategy and thus fill our DP matrix diagonally. If you have any questions guys, please do ask me in the comments. I would love to answer and help you out. 
I personally took a lot of time understanding this question. I went through it again and again. Even after going through the solution, I never really understood why are we going to burst the last balloon? How are we going to understand? So if you want to have such discussions with me, please, you are completely welcome. Let's have those discussions. But I really hope you like the explanation and the video. So let me know in the comments and please don't forget to like, share and subscribe. It will mean a lot to me. Thank you.